Schwarz zu So we gather, and we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. So just to welcome you to Mass uh, this evening, and uh, we're, this is a family Mass where we remember in particular families, 
uh, both our, our families locally in the three parishes here local, locally and families all over the country and world wherever families are checking in. But you're very welcome and thank you for, for joining us. And in the, the gospel today, there's that uh, really where Jesus is asked what, what's really the most important thing in life. And of course, we know from even last week that it all comes down to love. And at a time like this, uh, we need love more than ever. And we're called to show love more than ever because love is always healing and, and uniting and it, it just builds community wherever it finds itself. So that's what's before us. But as always, as we begin, we draw back and we say sorry for our various faults and failings and make peace with God and with each other. So for the times, Lord, we haven't been people of love. Lord, have mercy. For the times we haven't reached out in a spirit of love to others, especially those who need it, Christ have mercy. And for the times maybe we've, we've been impatient or unkind or, or judgmental, Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. So that's what we're here to do. We're not just here to watch, we're here to pray. And we all carry people and prayers in our hearts. So just for a moment in the silence, we might think of what person or prayer you want to give to God in today's So we give you your thoughts, your prayers, your families to God. We offer this Mass especially for the soul of John O'Malley, and we think of his late wife Winifred and his family watching live in Switzerland and America and home. We think of Anne Dunn and Eve Byrne, so we remember Anne on her anniversary and her husband Jimmy and Lawrence and Nicole and Walter and Katrina and all the family. We think of Cal and Joan McCarthy whose anniversary it is. Michael Scanlon, who's, it's the centenary of his, his death for Ireland. Uh, and so we, we bring them and you and all our prayers to God as we pray, Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope and charity and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observe the sort of life we lived when we were with you, which was for your instruction, and you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with joy of the Holy Spirit that you took to the gospel in spite of the great opposition all around you. This has made you the great example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread. And not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia, for the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, and how you broke with island tree, when you were converted to your God and became servants of the real living God. And how you were now waiting for Jesus, his son, whom he raised from the dead, to come to heaven Save us from the retribution which is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. O Lord, cleanse my heart and my lips, so that I may worthily proclaim and live your word. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. And so I'm going to bring you over as, as always for the family mass, but I've already technical hiccups that uh, are coming our way now, but we'll keep you posted about then. And the technical hiccup is, thankfully the, it's still posting it online, but I can't see the comments. So I was going to have a, an interactive, like we'd normally do, a, an interactive homily, whereby we'd ask questions. So now the plus is, I can ask questions, but I won't see answers, so that's okay. The challenge I was gonna set for you at home, so this is where I have to trust if you want to do it. It's a little quiz, uh, a little quiz, and you can kind of challenge whoever you're listening to at home and see who gets the right answers. And as I say, I won't be able to see your answers because whatever's wrong here, the comments have, have gone off on me. Now I'm just checking to see if there's anything I can do about that. I don't think so. Uh, anyway, yeah, and I'm afraid I'll, I'll hit something and turn it all off and that would be even worse. Anyway, the quiz is straightforward enough, right? Instead of actually giving you the question, what I'm going to do is give you the answer. And all the questions are around the greatest. Who is or what is the greatest? And then you see the answer and you go, okay, you put an end to that question. So for example, the first one I'll show you just in a, as an example, and again, sorry, now this won't work on an interactive front, but the answer is Manchester United, right? So you would have to guess what was the question around the greatest that meant you gave this answer. And that's an obvious one, obviously, because it was like, what is the greatest team ever, right? So you've got the idea. So you're getting the answer, and you have to then, as a family, decide what the question was and see who gets it first at home. I won't be able to see what answers you're giving. Technology, the joys. Anyway, so next one, right? Toy Story. So that's the answer. The question was who or what is the greatest something and the answer given is Toy Story. So at home, think about what the question might have been. See who gets it first. You might be commenting away for all I know. I just can't see them. Maybe it's for the best. You could have even given out about me. So Toy Story is the answer. The question, I'm sure you've guessed it, is what is the greatest kids or children's movie? I'm sure you guessed that one, right? So that's it, well done. See who gets the bragging whites at home. Next one, answer is Blossom. This is a tricky one. Uh, I'll give you a clue. It's not related to a tree or nature. It's related to a cartoon. That's a clue. The younger people in the house will get this. The older people, you won't have a clue. Well, I wouldn't have a clue. I don't think you'd have a clue either, but anyway. So, the answer is Blossom. It's related to a cartoon. The children in the house maybe should have the question. So how did you do? Have you thought about it? Sorry again, I'm working in the dark. I have none of your answers. So we'll see. The question is, who is the greatest Powerpuff Girl? And the answer was Blossom. Now, to be honest, I would be more to go for Buttercup or Bubbles, or a butcher look, the answer is Blossom, okay? The next answer that you're given, Spider-Man. So what was the question? 
So now, again, decide as a, a family, if you're going against each other, you tell, who, what, tell who everyone else what you think the question is. So, what might have been the question? Right? I'm sure you probably would have guessed it. The question is, well, like, should I give you more time? See, I haven't a clue now because I can't see the comments. I'm sure I'm clueless at the best of times. But anyway, who is the greatest superhero? And the answer was Spider-Man. Apparently, Superman and Batman came second and third. Now, you mightn't agree with the answers, by the way. I just got them off the internet. I mightn't agree. Sure, I, I didn't think Blossom was the best Powerpuff girl. My money was on Buttercup, but you'll have that. This one. Answer, great answer, one of the best answers of the evening, Limerick. So what do you think the question was? Now here's where I thought on the comments front, people might try and get smart and kind of say all sorts of stuff. You can say it away now, I won't see it, you won't hurt me, because I can't see them. So the answer is Limerick. The question was, what do you think the question might have been? I'm sure you might have figured it out at home. It's an obvious question. What is the greatest county in Ireland? And the answer, Limerick. So that was straightforward. And I'll give you just a couple of minutes. Oh, this one. The answer is Chase, but not like Chase is to chase somebody. Chase is the name of a character. So I was chatting to a young boy up at Cush Cross today. Owen, he loves this cartoon. And this is his favorite character. So what's the question? Young people in the house will get this better than the older people. The older people might do OK with this one as well. Do you think you've asked the right question? I'm sure, I hope you have. The right question is, who is the greatest in Paw Patrol? And the answer given in most surveys was Chase, although I think Marshall deserves a bit of credit too, you know? Uh, I will finish then with, I might leave out ice cream because maybe that, you know, I'm only giving you bad example by asking that question and I can't see what you'd be asking. Next answer, John Kiley. Another great answer. So what was the question? If the answer is John Kiley, and the questions are all about who or what is the greatest, what question was asked that we gave John Kiley as an answer? I'm sure everyone locally got that. If anyone all over, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world you'd have gotten that. The answer is, or the question was, who is the greatest hurling manager? The answer is obviously John Kiley. We're not a bit biased here in Limerick, so we're not. Anyway. Last one, just kind of on a gentle front. The answer is family or friends. So, what might the question have been around the greatest? And again, sorry, I can't interact and tell you if you're right or wrong, but what might the question have been? The question is, might have been, is what is the greatest blessing in our lives? And the greatest blessing or gift in our lives is always family and friends. Now, I was going to ask you, based on that, I oh, sure it's going to be brilliant, all this interaction, and it's gone out the window. Why might I have, if you listen to the gospel, you'll know why I was asking questions all related to the greatest. Because in the gospel today, I can't ask you now, but in the gospel, I should ask Pierce, I should have just asked you all the questions, <laughs> poor Pierce, or maybe our, our, our organist and singer, but we'll leave you off the hook, right? The question in the gospel today was, what is the greatest command? So that's why the questions were all about the greatest. Now, you would have told me that. You would have figured that out. At the time of Jesus, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were experts in the law. And they had, in the Torah, which was their law, they had 613 rules and regulations. And I have each one written here for you to look at. There's 613 and it just keeps going and going and going. So I think I'll go through all 613 uh, witches. For example, my favorite is rule 459. It's a great one. I, do, I recommend looking it up. So all those 613 rules of the Torah, Jesus kind of took all of them and brought it down to one thing. And that one thing is love. He said, look, there's 613 rules, but actually you'll keep all those rules if you love God and love your neighbor as yourself. So I was going to give you a very quick experiment on love, conscious of time, very quick experiment on love. 
Pierce, I might uh, put you on the spot. I, I, I promised I wouldn't today, so maybe I shouldn't. Right, so anyway, on this, I was going to ask a question. Love is a very special thing. Normally, when we give something away, we have less of it. That's how it normally works. So if I eat three apples and I give two away, I'm, less, I'm left with less apples. If I have five bars of chocolate and I give one away, I have less bars of chocolate. That's what normally happens when we give something away. That's not what happens when we give love away. And I'm going to give you an example of this. So, I have love written on this sheet. How many corners are on the sheet? You can answer away. I won't hear you, but you'll look answer away. There's four. One, two, three, four. So if I took a corner, I cut a corner off and I gave it to Pierce, how many corners would be left? So there's four corners. If I cut one off, gave it to Pierce, how many would be left? Now I can't see your answers, obviously, so I'll just have to go ahead. I'm going to guess most of you said three. That would seem like the obvious answer. So we'll see. I'm going to cut a corner. I'm always cutting corners. Now let's count the corners. One. Two, three, four, five. How did that work? Love, it's a great thing. The more you give away, the more you have. We will try again. So now it has went from four to five corners. How good would you be this time? If I cut another corner off and gave it to Pierce, normally in life I'd have less of it, but with love it means there's more. So will we see? So there's currently five. So if I cut another corner, and give it away to Pierce. How many corners have we? One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So I suppose today we reflect on love. And love comes in many shapes and sizes. And basically, Jesus said those 630 rules of the Torah, and they were all great rules and important rules, but he said, God, you'll never remember all those, lads. 613, you won't remember those. But if you love, and you love God and love your neighbor as yourself, all will be well. So really that's our challenge, to love God, love neighbor and love self. And that's an important thing for us all to do. And we saw a perfect example of love in action. Love comes in many ways. In action today, out by Cush Cross, as we had a drive by for Dahi, who was home for the weekend, and the neighbors drove by and all hooted and waved. Perfect example of love in action. I hope you'll find ways to put love in action this week. And remember, with love, the more you give away, the more you have. So we're going to, well, you can stand now for the prayers of the faithful. And Pierce is going to lead us in the prayers of the faithful. We pray that as members of the church, we will reflect the love and compassion of God in the bits and pieces of our daily lives. Lord, hear us. We pray for leaders. May they be motivated by love and foster justice and compassion in all areas of life, while showing special care for those at the margins of society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that we will respond generously to the great commandment to, that calls to love God and to love our neighbour. As we grow in love of God, we can but grow in love of our neighbour. May we grow in love of both. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The great commandment calls us to love our neighbour as ourselves. So may we be gentle with ourselves and strive to grow in acceptance of ourselves with our faults and failings and our strengths and weaknesses. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are sick, especially those with the virus. We pray for all those who bravely care for the sick. We pray for all those who are finding t t things tough at the moment. May they find within them and around the resolve and grace that they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And as we thank Pierce for that, we remember our dead. We pray for all those who've died. We remember especially in this Mass the soul of John O'Malley. So we remember John and his wife, Winifred. We remember the soul of Anne Dunn. And we remember Anne and her family. We remember uh, Daniel Hartnett on the occasion of his second anniversary, Michael Scanlon, Cal and Joan McCarthy, whose anniversary it is, Maureen Hennessy Dowling, whose anniversary it is, Eileen and John Murphy, and Mary Carroll and Charlie Carroll. We remember those who've died recently as well. We think of Joan O'Brien and Mary Smith and Patrick Smith 
and Dolores Fahan and Annie O'Lally. So we pray to them and for them as we pray eternal rest. Grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. So we make these and we make all our prayers through Christ. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given us Jesus, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your children. And so now with all the angels and saints, with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You're the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember John and Anne and all our loved ones, all who are brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And so, on this Sunday, when we're reminded that we're called to do, it says the, the double great commandment, but really it's three things. A call to love God, to love neighbour, and to love self. And sometimes we fall down on one or two or all three, but particularly sometimes the love and acceptance of self. It's as important as love of neighbour and so on. So we pray for the grace we need to grow in love of God, in love of neighbour, and love of self. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may that peace of the Lord, may it be with you always. And we take a moment and we pray for peace for you listening and watching, those of your family, wherever our family are in the world. Just we pray for peace for each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. So we pray. Behold Jesus, the one who calls us to be people of love. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who are And we pray this prayer of spiritual communion for those who can't receive, for those listening in the parish, those watching at home, we pray for you and we pray that we'll be reminded that we can receive spiritually. We're connected through strings of love and prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
feels like we're right back to the start. I'm beginning to doubt that I have the heart. To go again, Lord, and face the challenge anew. Oh Lord, please help me what I am to do. Missing family, grandchildren, and indeed my best friend. Facing long evenings that are dark and don't end. I'm tempted to give up, Lord. I'm struggling to cope. Please draw close to me, Lord, and fill me with hope. The Lord whispers and gently and touches my heart and says, don't be afraid, you're my work of art. My spirit is in you, you're made of good stuff. You have all that you need when the going gets tough. You have the endless courage, light and love. Trust in yourself and in God up above. Reach out to others and don't go it alone. Together we'll make it, we'll find our way home. And just as each prayer ends, with him in. Trust I am with you and we'll go again. Thanks very much, Pierce. And we will go again. And that's what the human spirit does, as in we will always find a way to keep going no matter what. So that's, oops, sorry, uh, that's the prayer and the hope. Uh, and thanks, Pierce, for that. And so let us pray. And we pray, may your sacraments, O Lord, perfect in us what lies within them that what we now celebrate in science we may one day possess in truth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just a, a big thank you to, to Pierce for the, the reading, to Colette and Seamus for their beautiful music and singing, and to thank all those, the flowers, the beautiful flowers behind us, those who've created the flowers. We thank you very much. And all uh, to thank Hannah and the sacristy. A couple of announcements as well. The Dominican Sisters in Limerick, if you check their website, uh, they have um, an evening around vocation for women between 16 and 30. It's at 7.30 this evening where they have a talk about vocation. And so 7.30 this evening, but if you visit their website, Dominican Sisters in Limerick, if you're interested. Also on the diocesan, Limerick Diocesan website, and we'll share it on our Facebook and on our our parish website, there's resource evenings. So on Tuesday and Thursday and the following Tuesday at 7.30, there's inputs given around certain things, be it Bible study or scripture reflection, pilgrimage, remembrance, pastoral councils, practical things that parishes might be interested in. So again, we'll try and post that on our website or you'll also find it on the Limerick Diocesan website. So I think they're pretty much the announcements. Clocks. The clocks go forward, fall forward. No, back, 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 right. <laughs> oh, jeez, I, I want to go back. I want to go back to bed. <laughs> Everything's going wrong to see. I see even the camera I'm in at an angle now. I should stand like this. Anyway, yes, the clocks go back. Normally, we'd be thrilled an extra hour in bed, but an extra hour in 2020. Oh, good God. Anyway, so just I thank, thank Eva uh, to someone who rang me yesterday to remind me because she knows I'm a disaster at remembering it. So, clocks go back tonight. I'm so going to miss that up. Anyway, thank you for being with us. Sorry the comments weren't working, uh, so I couldn't see your brilliant, wonderful answers. I'm sure they were brilliant and wonderful. I hope no one was slagging Limerick or Man United in the process. But I hope you have a uh, good week. I suppose the sad news is that there's no school this week. So for all our local children, we know you're going to be gutted by that. But I hope you'll find ways to keep yourselves occupied. Anyway, thanks for being with us. Uh, there's Mass tomorrow at 12 and the Rosary at 5.30. And I hope you can stay positive and well in the midst of everything. Oh, I forgot, there was a few birthdays. Jean and Jody and Tara, one of our local girls who made confirmation is 13 today, a teenager. So that's got to be marked. Happy birthday, Tara. Anyway, sorry, more importantly, we pray the Lord be with you all and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. We'll go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be
So sorry for the wonky camera, but anyway, thanks for being with us. Uh, I hope you stay safe, stay well, and God bless.